All right, this video here is about the big takeover, man. This the big takeover, you know. I'm going to tell you about how my man Big Red took over the Baltimore joint. You know what I mean? This the big takeover, how my man Red took over the Baltimore joint. All right. tell you how you know my man big red took over the baltimore joint he mentioned that the other day but i'm gonna break it down in my unique voice <laughs> you know what i mean let me show you now this is big red all right now this is my man big red now big red is a dude that he refused you know to stay incarcerated big red is equivalent to kunta kente from roots you remember how Kunta kept running where they had to chop his foot off to stop him from running? But that's that man on the screen from our generation. He refused to stay incarcerated, you know? So what he did was he went to the butcher shop in the prison and he got a he got a, 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 a Ziploc bag full of blood, like from the hamburger meat. You know, he paid a dude a couple of cartons to get the the, the, the blood, you know, put in the Ziploc bag. He took it back, and he went and got ice, threw it on it, and he kept changing the ice until he was ready. He talked it over with one of his homies, and they decided that they was going to make their break and how they was going to make their break, you know. So when he was ready, he takes the blood, and he smears it all over his face, and he puts them in a spray bottle. Now, how ingenious is that? He puts him in a spray bottle and they give us white t-shirts. So he, he sprayed himself with the blood so it looked like blood splatter, you know. Then he sprayed his hands. Then he walked out to what they call the bubble, you know. The bubble is the center control. That's where the police sit in there. They locked in and all the convicts is, you know, are around them and they can see them. And the convicts can't get to them unless they open this bubble. So Big Red goes and he slams his blood-smeared hands on the bubble. And when he smeared his blood-stained hands on the bubble, he falls down like if, you know, he just got stabbed. The sergeant that's in the bubble, he comes running out. So when he comes running out, he go, to go check on Big Red. You all right? You all right? And Big Red rolls over and he got a 38. And he told him, you know what it is, cop. You know what I mean? So he takes the police and the other police and he put one on each tier. And he had an inmate watching each police in each cell, you know? And he went around and he opened up all the doors to the prison. I know this sounds like a movie because our life is a movie. You know what I mean? Gunshots. You know, polite gunshots. You know, for those of y'all that don't understand the gunshots. You know? So, Big Red goes and opens up all the cells to all the doors. And he let everybody out because Big Red is a convict. What he wants for himself, he wants for everyone else. So, he opened a door to free everyone up. So, everybody come running out. The only thing Red didn't calculate is, because Red... Only thing on his mind, like I said, is like Kunta Kinte is freedom. So he made his break for freedom in the prison. And he let go all his comrades out they cells. They come out and instead of them worrying about freedom, they worrying about settling old beefs that they had with each other. So they start stabbing each other. And now it's a big brawl. It's a riot going on in the jail where all these convicts is stabbing each other instead of thinking about freedom, you know? So, you know, he takes the police hostage, and like I said, he put them in these cells, and he got somebody watching them in each cell. So while he's sitting there and he watching them in each cell, 
you know, the dudes is sitting there and he goes downstairs. You know what I mean? Because he got dudes sitting outside the cell. And he go check on the other people and he go look. Because they had like a little, this much left of a fence to cut with a hacksaw blade that he had. For them to get out to get freedom. So that's what's on his mind. But these dudes want to stab each other. So he had to sit there and let the brothers know, yo, what are you doing? We're trying to get out of prison. We're not trying to kill each other in this prison. That's why I opened these doors, you know? So dudes kind of calmed down a little bit, and they kind of got, you know, hip to what was going on. Now, when he runs back upstairs, he notices that there's a, you know, sheer empty in front of a cell where a convict is supposed to be watching the police that they handcuffed on the bed. When he goes in the cell, all he smelled were feces. Feces. So you know what that means. You know what I mean? They don't ran up in the cop. You know? I mean, this is back this this is back during the time, you know, before he cipher monkey cipher became popular and famous in this country and a way of life in this country. So that's the biggest way you could degrade a man is to take his manhood. So they done took the correction officer's manhood and read it like, oh man, come on, dog, what are y'all doing? I mean, if y'all love me, you know, if y'all love me, y'all ain't going to do this because at the end of the day, all this is going to fall back on me so y'all get up out of here. You know what I mean? And Red turns around and walk away to let them make their own choice because they all they old men. So they said, all right, Red, you got that. You know what I mean? You got that. You know, they done ran up all in the man, you know what I mean? Split them open in the whole night, you know? So now they back on course with what they doing, you know? So let's get that right, you know? Some inmates didn't even want to leave, as you heard Red say, because they didn't want to leave their TV behind. Or as we say in the penitentiary, their television. They didn't want to leave their television behind, <laughs> you know? So, imagine a man got a chance to go free, and he don't want to leave his TV behind. Some didn't want to leave their pictures because they had too many pictures to carry, and they had all these reasons that showed that they was institutionalized, you know? So they didn't want to leave. So, you know, it's a shame, but that's just how it is, you know? Nobody understands what it's like to be incarcerated and institutionalized more than a man that's incarcerated and institutionalized. Now, Big Red sit here... And they're fighting, they're taking over the jail, they're carrying on, you know? And Red goes in the cell to the cop, correction officer, you know, that lost his manhood. And he throws his 38 under the bed, you know what I mean? And, and, and tells him, what's going on, cop? You know? And the cop said, man, I don't want no problems, I just want to go home to my family. And Red said, I don't want no problem either. I just want my freedom. So the cop said, okay, let me go home to my family. You can have your freedom. So Red said, give me your wallet. The man gives him his wallet. He looks at it. He said, look, you know, I don't want to have to do nothing to nobody that you love. You know, so he knows he got his address. So the cop knew right there that if he said something, you know, after the event, that all hell was going to break loose. And now he has his family address. And, of course, he has people on the outside that they worried about me go do something to their family. So the dude said, man, just spare me, man. You know? So Red takes his ID and stuff, and he knows where he's at. So now, when everything break loose, you know, I'm going to keep this one short and to the point. When everything break loose and it was all said, the, the administration come and they shouting out with bull, bull horns and they calling Red to the window and they asking him what y'all want, this and that. 
All Red wanted was his freedom. But, you know, Red started yelling about all the different things that they, you know, wasn't getting that they was entitled to get while they was in their prison to make it like it was a hostage thing and he didn't have nothing to do with it in that aspect that it's everybody's just tired of the conditions within the prison when it wasn't about the conditions of the, within the prison. It was just an uh, issue with, you know, being in prison, <laughs> you know, per se. So, you know, they go down there and next thing you know, they fighting all in the yard and they carrying on and, uh, I mean, all types of mayhem breaks out, you know. So once the administration get control of their jail again, once they get control of their jail again, they start questioning the men. And could you believe that every man that Red opened himself for, including the men, that didn't want their freedom more than they wanted their TV, didn't tell on Big Red. You know, the officer that he had handcuffed that was taken advantage of, <laughs> let's say, feces everywhere, feces everywhere. You know, even that officer, you know, cause remember, we, we, we talking about back in the time where he cipher, monkey cipher, you know what I mean, was the, was frowned upon. So no way did this officer want to have to sit up in a courtroom and reenact the way, you know, they took his manhood in that cell. So even an officer never told on Big Ray, you know. Because he wanted to keep, you know, what happened in the prison in the prison. Because he figured, how could he look at his family for them to know that he lost his manhood? That's the worst thing you could do and lose your manhood. I'm going to tell you another one, you know, another time, not right now. I'm going to tell you another one about how a brother was his disrespected. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now. Let me ride. Let me ride. I'm going to give y'all two and one because I respect y'all. You know, it was a dude from Louisiana. He was on the compound. He doing his thing. He hustling one of New York homies. They got all the cigarettes. You know, they got the, the, the straight Bacardi from the street. Police bringing in everything they need to bring in and they doing what they got to do. So, while this is going on, right, just so you understand, while this is going on, the dude is living his best life, that he's a gangster, he got the pack, he's surviving in jail, he paying for his lawyer on the street, he's taking care of his wife, his mistress, his kids, and he's doing everything he needs to do. But then someone comes to the compound from Lompoc, from Louisiana, because there's only a handful of dudes there left from Louisiana. When they, we was in Coleman. When they first opened up Coleman, they opened it up to bring the guys from Louisiana when they had that big flood over there. Like, it's like I said, I'm riding, man, I'm riding. They bring all the Louisiana dudes over there from the state prison system, and they came there, they was wilding. They introduced on Coleman Compound, you know, dudes, you know, masturbating at the female COs. I mean, these dudes were so wild from Louisiana, they'll pull their joint out, and they'll just start <laughs> jacking in front of the COs, in front of everybody, cold disrespecting the females. And let me say this about the female correction officers. I don't look at them as police. Convicts don't look at them as police. Because here it is a woman that can't get a job, trying to feed her family, trying to feed her children, so she go get a government job so she could get the benefits so that the medical and everything could take care of her children and her family. And that's why she came in there. She didn't come in there to get nobody in trouble. She didn't come in there to lock nobody up. She just came in there because she was trying to find a better way to take care of her family. So round of applause to the females that became correction officers. <laughs> Applause to the females that became correction officers. That's how serious this is, you know. So the Louisiana dudes was all out of control. So and they were stabbing and they was carrying on because they they go hard, y'all. But we're not even gonna play. You know what I mean? Those dudes coming out of Louisiana, they went hard. They terrorized Coleman. 
You know what I mean? They terrorized COVID. But they wound up having to grab all of them and moving them, and they hurried up and set them the first place they had open for them to get them out of there because they was too wild for that, for that federal jail. But, you know, the ones that was federal inmates, they kept them, and this brother that was from out there, you know what I mean, was doing his thing, hustling with the New York homie. I mean, they was getting 10 cartons of cigarette. Each carton go for 3500 or $4,000. So we're talking about $35,000 to $40,000 they getting in a clip. Yes, the money was like that, you know. So while they sitting there doing that, they sent a dude there from Louisiana because there was only a handful left there now. And the ones that was there, a couple of them wasn't with it because they said, nah, this dude ain't right. He ain't supposed to be eating. He ain't supposed to be on the compound. But he breaking everybody off. That's called self-pressing. He's self-pressing himself in order to let and pay for people to keep his secret. But they wasn't with it, but the few other majority, they was with it, and they kind of comped the other dudes down not to do nothing to them. Then they had a real gangster come on the compound. And he said, man, I don't care how much money he getting, how much money he giving us, none of that. He don't deserve to be on his compound. He's a rat bastard, and that's it. And you already know there's nothing more I hate than a rat bastard and a dude that wear flip-flops in public, you know? So now, the dude that comes there, he puts a move together, and he gets the few brothers that wasn't really with it but was just letting it ride because the others was letting it ride and they stayed away from him and didn't take nothing from his riches. But they didn't want to interfere with the other convicts that was succumbing to being brought by a rat bastard. You follow me? Uh, so pay attention now, because we ride. So they go out there and they jump some. And they jumps on him. So you youngies want to go to prison, think you tough, and you're going to be able to tell and hide and pay your way and do all this because, you know, you disranked in your gang and this and that. All that is thrown out the window when you go in that penitentiary and you label a rat. Or, or he's cipher, monkey cipher, keeping it 100. You know what I mean? Now, we go in a joint. They jumps the boy and they whoops him. They knocks him out cold. And then somebody took their finger and violated his manhood. They took their finger and put it in this man's rectum. In front of the yard. Now that's a tall order for any stand-up man to live with. That he was violated. And this dude was moving like what he thought was a gangster. Other than the fact, he was a gangster, other than the fact that he told. Those of y'all from Louisiana, y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm not even going to say his name, because like I said, I respect everybody on my channel. That's why I said, if you got an issue with anything, my phone number's on the screen. I answer my phone number. We don't need the disrespectful comments in the joint. Call me and say, you mean, I didn't like that shit you said. And I could deal with that. Talk to me as a man. Whether you're a female or a man or whatever. You know what I mean? Because I know I got both sex, you know, viewers. My phone number works. I answer my phone number. Ask Daphne from Atlanta. Ask Brandon from Chicago. You understand what I'm saying? I get the, my Baltimore peoples that call me. I had a brother call me from Jersey yesterday. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it is what it is, man. You know, I answer my phone. Contact me if it's something I say that you don't like. But like I said, you know, I'm not even going to speak on the rat bastard's name you know, that got violated, you know, had a dude put his finger up his joint, you know. I'm not going to disrespect him. I don't disrespect nobody here. I don't respect him. Let's get that right. I don't respect him. I don't respect what he did by turning into a rat bastard. You know what I mean? But like I said, just like we got lions, you know, tigers and bears, you know, in the jungle and crickets and mosquitoes and caterpillars, you know what I mean, and birds and you know what I mean? And possums and raccoons. You know, we got rats amongst us. And once you know what they are, you know they just stay out their lane. In my yard, I see a groundhog the other day. You know, 
When I went outside and I saw the groundhog, I just went the other way. I didn't try and kill it. So I'm not going to try and kill a rat bastard. And I'm not telling you to either. I'm just saying, once you know who they are, stay out their way. And that's it. So, they violated this man, you know, from Louisiana, because that's how gangster Louisiana get down. They said, nah, you down with us, you from where we from, you don't turn coat, turn size, now we got to violate you and disrespect you to the utmost. And they put their finger in this man. So now, you know, like I said, I don't have to say his name. You know, people from Louisiana know who it is, and I'm sure it followed him to the street where his people know and he tried to justify it and deny it and all this and all that, but we can't do that. You know what I mean? Because you was mocked. Like I, like I saw, hey, let me ride. You know, like I saw a video on YouTube the other day. They had a dude that was a rat bastard that was snitching. And they tattooed snitch on his forehead. In big letters, they tattooed the word snitch. That's called the mark of the beast. Don't get involved in the street. Don't get involved in crime. So you don't have to make the choice to worry about trying to save your own ass by turning, by turning in your comrades. And this is what this is about. Stay in your lane. The caterpillar stays in its lane. You see a butterfly, you don't go chasing it around the yard. You see a bee, you don't even go chasing it. When you see a bee and you swat at it, it comes at you. So if you see a rat and you, and you, and you talk shit about it, it's going to come at you and you can't win against a rat. That's like you arguing with a he cipher, monkey cipher. You're in two different leagues. So there's two different forms of disrespect. So you stay out the he cipher, monkey cipher's way. And you don't have to disrespect him. You don't have to agree with what he did. No, you stay out his lane. As long as he stay out yours. But as a man, as a convict, when they cross in front of my lane, when you enter my lane, I will crush you. I'm just saying that so you understand. But I'm not going to come out my lane to step into your lane to crush you or expose you. Because you're already exposed to yourself. Like Big Red said, there's so many so-called men that have to sneak up on the mirror. Sneak up on the mirror. Because they can't look at themselves. So they... <sighs> And they hide from themselves because they can't even look at themselves because they're not proud of who they are. You understand what I'm saying? So like I said, I don't disrespect nobody here. My phone number is on the screen. If you disagree with something, I say, if you want to give me my flowers, if you got a question, my joint is up there. My cash app is also up there. Make sure when you go to my cash app, it's the go in to see when it was created. Make sure that it was created in 2020. If it was created in 2023, that's not me. That's the duplicate account. You know what I mean? Shots to the fake troll that duplicated my account. But I'm on your line. You know what I mean? And it's a pleasure. You know what I mean? It's a pleasure. Because like I said, there's nothing, there's nothing better than getting even. You know, nothing better than getting even. And God always look out for me and I always get even. See, he got me back out here on the street to give you all these jewels. But like I said, eh, let's ride back. We talking about Big Red. So, you know, when they went to court, nobody testified against Big Red. got 20 years, though. But he didn't get 20 years for the mayhem in the prison. He got 20 years for stabbing another inmate. You know what I mean? Added to his sentence. You know? And he willfully took that. He didn't tell who was with him, who wasn't with him, who this, that, because there's nothing to tell when you get caught. That's on you because you chose to do what you chose to do. Now you have to answer to the reaction to your actions. And that's it and that's all. Can't say no more than that. You know? But nobody told on Big Red. No one identified Big Red or none of that. You know, just so you fully understand what I'm saying, stay in your lane, man. Be that caterpillar, you know. Be that groundhog. Be that snake. 
Be that rat, but stay in your damn lane and stay away from real men. Stay away from men of honor. Stay away from men of principles and respect because you have none. That's why you chose to roll over and crawl on your belly and deal with the administration. So if that's what you're planning on doing, don't get involved so you don't have to make these choices and ruin your manhood and possibly getting a finger stuck up you to disrespect your manhood. Just stay in your lane. I ain't going to be up here much longer. I just wanted to say that, man, and let the peoples know where we at, man. Like I said, go to my Roku channel. You know what I mean? Unique Mecca Audio. Go to my podcast, Unique Mecca Audio, with Spotify, iTunes, and all those pod podcast channels. My cash app on the screen. Make sure it says that it was created in 2020, not 2023. All right, so let me tap out, man. I appreciate y'all. God bless. Y'all have a good day. And take these jewels with you and make your life even better. All right. Cheers. 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 Toast the crime. Toast the crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Hey. Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully, posse, and put it in hall. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. An Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. It's talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community ours. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they to troop them and bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.